Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Oder. I'm here with Eric Rowley from the Barbecue HQ, and we are cooking a brisket on a rotisserie. Every time I come to the Barbecue HQ, we try something out that I've never tried before. Over the weekend, we had a class in a big parking lot event, had a lot of people come out, it was a lot of fun, but today we get to mess around with some of the gear inside. None of the smokers that I have, even though I have way too many of them, have a rotisserie. And so I've always thought it would be cool to try to cook a brisket on a rotisserie. Have you given that a shot? Like, what's your experience with that? So I've messed with it. I haven't been successful with the brisket. Part of the reason why is I think I always had too big of a brisket, and the last time I attempted it, I burned out two motors two rotisserie motors and they're not the strongest, which we'll discuss why this Twin Eagle pellet grill is why we're using this sure. one. So I've tried it with 14 pound briskets. I've tried it on Kamado Joe's. I've tried it on pellet grills. So I haven't had much success with it because of a whole different variety of factors. Like on the Kamado, yep. you're really trying to manage the coal bed and having to keep the heat up, but not have massive flares because of all the fat coming off of it. On the pellet grill, Again, like Green Mountain Grills have a rotisserie system, uh, burn out the motors there. Your lesser expensive rotisserie motors, when you're trying to sling a 14 pound brisket around, it's just a lot of wear and tear after, you know, even like they all failed within that four to five hour point. Gotcha. Again, it's just a lot of weight. That brings us here to the Twin Eagle Pellet Grill. Yeah, this is a about $11,000 cooker. So not less expensive. <laughs> not less expensive. They've got the best rotisserie game in the system on their gas grills too. So they actually have a chain drive. There's a motor down below and there's a chain drive. Oh. Okay. And it's got like 120 like inch pounds of torque. So basically like okay. if you grab onto this thing, it might flip you over the back of the grill. All so right, I am not worried about the durability of this unit. You and I were con kind of contemplating, but this has a direct grill capability. Yep. So we can remove this insert and go more direct. I think that might lead to more flare ups. We're actually kind of game planning this on the spot. The motto of this cook is we'll do it live. The thing that fascinates me about this grill is that it looks like a high-end gas grill, but it actually runs on pellets. This thing's really, really cool. So here's actually where your hopper is. So your pellets go in here. They have a direct flame system that mimics what Twin Eagle does on their gas grills. There's also a charcoal pan that'll drop into here. You put charcoal in it, hit charcoal mode. It uses the pellets to light the charcoal and oh, off wow. you go. So I love using that. It's got holes here you can hang uh, hooks. And then obviously we have the second racks out, but this thing is really awesome, awesome pellet grill. You know, it looks like a spaceship with the, the control exactly. panel on it for $11,000. Would you expect anything less? Anyways, I'm real excited to try this. As you mentioned, we'll start kind of basic to see what the result is, see what we have to add to it to get kind of what we're going after. Yeah. So I've never seen it done. You've done it and seen it done but I, I guess maybe you've never seen it work successfully. No, I haven't been able to get it to work successfully. I'd say the only thing that I've gotten close, it wasn't rotisserie, but uh, I've cooked a brisket on a pit barrel cooker. Yep. And I've always was like concerned about, well, how, how are we gonna hang a piece of meat that's basically gonna fall, you know, almost fall apart right. on us. Like I just expected it to boom, end right. up on the grate. Like I tried to rotisserie a whole salmon once and that's exactly where it ended up. But okay. I've had success in the pit barrel cooker on both pork butt and brisket, and I think if, as long as you don't overcook it, if it falls off, I, I, I guess we're done. <laughs> gotcha, so on the pit barrel cooker, you're using charcoal and wood chunks. Yeah. On here, we're using pellets. What kind of pellets are we using for the um, viewer at home? Yeah, so this is Papa's Pellets. They're actually a new company. They've been in the, the game for a while, but they've sent me some stuff and I've been really happy with it. So probably actually one of the most consistent pellets I've used in a long time. Like I put them up there like barbecuers delight as far as consistency. So we got Papa's right. pecan in here, which I think is gonna give us a, a good flavor for this and work well, works great in this pellet grill. And um, yeah, see what we get. All right, well, I have a nine pound brisket that I got from Costco, so not too heavy, but hopefully thick enough that it should do well in this cook. Ready, let's skewer this bad boy up. Pull! Oh. That's sweet. It, it, uh, yeah. it unwrapped and uh, trimmed itself. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> no, you just got to season it and put it on. We should throw briskets in the air more often. <laughs> All right, I trimmed up this brisket and I tried to get it as even as possible. We were actually game planning. Well, how are we going to treat it? Are we going to use something like this, a charcoal rub, so we get a nice, dark, even color all over the outside? But we thought the fairest thing to do is use this Killer Hogs Texas brisket rub. What was the motivation in doing that? Well, we just wanted to go 
figure out what's our baseline on this, right? So if we start introducing a rub, it's got sugar, we're not really knowing what the rotisserie, what the effects of that are gonna do. Right. So if we stick baseline, uh, there's no sugar in that. I mean, that's basically a salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic and whatever else Malcolm's got in there. Um, to me, that's that's a great baseline. It's a sure. little bit more than just doing salt and pepper, um, but I think it's, again, if we start going charcoal, we're not gonna know what, we, what we're actually getting from this. Right, and, and following our rule of changing only one thing at a time, yep. if we're changing the rub and like do crazy cook temperatures and use a different method of cooking completely. So this is something we're familiar with, we're used to, we know what results we get with yep. this. So if you use this with the rotisserie, we'll know what the rotisserie does. But I gotta confess, I have no idea how you actually go about skewering this thing. So should we season first, then skewer? or should we skewer first and then season? Let's get the meat on first and it'll be easy to season it afterwards because okay. it's gonna be a little bit of a wrestle trying to get that thing through this spit. Okay, so. that's what I was thinking. All right, moment of truth. Let me glove up. Go ahead, I got gloves. Oh, there's a man who's prepared. Eric, has anyone ever told you you're a celebrity doppelganger? Uh, I, I've heard like the voice of Mike Rowe every once in a oh, while. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can see that. This is a custom item. Dustin Johnson, the pro golfer. Oh, here's a new one, Matt Stefanina. I didn't know that. Was, we a little bit of elbow grease. Yeah, and the only downside is these Twin Eagle uh, bits are a lot bigger diameter than everybody else's, so I think it's momentum. That way. There we go, a little twist. It's gonna come through. You can see it moving. There it is. There it is. There we go. <laughs> Eureka. Nailed it. Actually, well done, sir. Yeah. I'm impressed. Skewering the meat versus actually just letting it, the skewers be the, uh, kind of assisting it along, you know? Just kind of holding it in place. Yeah. yeah. We might have to adjust it through the cook as the brisket shrinks. Just so you kind of loosen it and then bring it in more. And yeah, just kind of pinch it a little bit. Somebody may have done this on camera before. I don't recall ever seeing it. Well, everything's been on the internet, so I'm sure it exists somewhere. Eric had to step away for a minute, so I'm gonna attempt to load this on this uh, on this grill. No idea how it's gonna work. I see that there are two ends, there's a round end and kind of a square end. Ah, see there's a square end right there. And then that just sits there. So this is locked, one, two, three, unlocked. I think if I hit rotisserie, oh, look at that. That's pretty sweet, dude. I kind of really feel like I need one of these now. This is pretty incredible. <laughs> I see it kind of flopping. I don't know how it's going to do with that, but... Yeah, even with like maximum resistance that I can add by holding it, it's just dealing with it, no problem. Okay, I guess we close it up and check on it in a couple hours. Sometimes people ask me what I eat during these long cooks because I'm not going to be fasting for say 16 hours when I cook a brisket, but I do eat a lot of the same things over and over again. And what I use to cook it are also the same things over and over again. I want to tell you about today's sponsor made in. So we got made in pans and we tried them out for a couple days. And then pretty soon after that, we took all of our old cookware and donated it to Goodwill because made in was simply superior. And I'm excited to tell you about the new made in carbon steel griddle. And this is something I use all the time because it's great for searing and I can use it outside. So I'm not smoking up the whole house and uh, annoying the rest of my family members. My experience with made in cookware is not alone. It has replaced all the other cookware in the house. I use it all the time. I love it, but there are a hundred thousand other five-star reviews on made in cookware products. They're that good. They're so good. In fact, that they're used in multiple three Michelin star kitchens. They are really top notch. This made in griddle is super useful. Instead of pouring out tons of smoke by trying to sear things inside, I can do it outside with this griddle. Some people even put it in the firebox because it's so heat resistant and so durable. It's half the weight of cast iron, but is just as durable and you can use it for myriad different purposes. Not to be missed also is this cover and this burger press. There's a reason made in products are used and trusted all over the world. I use them, I trust them, and it's gonna be worth your while to check out the made in carbon steel collection and other made in cookware by clicking on the link in my description so that you can save today. 
After about three hours, we bumped the temperature up to 275 and have done nothing else. It's been about five and a half hours now. So let's take a look at this brisket and see how it's doing. So if you look at this, this looks really good. Everything is moist on the outside because rather than all the liquid just dripping and coming out of the grease drain, it's actually running all over the brisket. So it's covered in its own juice right now. It's looking really good. Let me stop the rotisserie and get it to him. Let's see. About 172 degrees. And now look at all the juice coming off when I stopped it. All that juice was rotating around the brisket. Now that the rotisserie is stopped, it's all falling off. That's crazy. Okay. Back in action. And again, basting in its own juice. This brisket looks so moist, it's crazy. So I'm really excited to see what it turns out like. If I'm being honest, the goal with this rotisserie brisket wasn't because I have an idea of how this is gonna be great and this is how we're gonna implement it. It's just, I wonder what happens if. And for me, it was, I wonder what happens if you cook a brisket in a rotisserie. And apparently it bastes in its own juices the whole time. It's actually really, really cool. So I don't think we're gonna wrap this at all. I think we're just gonna let it go unwrap the entire time and uh, pull it off, let it rest, slice into it, find out. All right, we're 10 hours in and this thing, even though it didn't start off as a big brisket, is finally finishing up, which is a little bit longer than I expected. I was expecting this thing after trimming is probably about eight pounds because we didn't get a huge one because we, even though we really trust this rotisserie, we don't want to break it because I'm sure if this is an $11,000 grill, that rotisserie is not cheap to replace. But what are your thoughts on why it's taking so long? I think what's interesting too is we've actually ramped the temp up a few times along the yeah. way, right? So it was like 225. It was getting color and doing good, but mm -hmm. like it, we weren't seeing impacts of too high of heat right. on the brisket. Not so we went, what, 225, 275, and now we're at 300, at 300. trying to push it through that, uh, that final stages. And actually that's where we're at right now is it's we're at a sweet spot with it. But it's interesting because as it rotates, well, let's actually look yeah, at it. Look. So, so as it rotates, like this is all we've been seeing all day and I didn't expect it to look this good. And yeah. I'm really glad we didn't go direct on it because it yep. would have been really gnarly. But like, there's hardly anything in the drip pans. There's hardly anything coming down on it. When you stop it, it goes. But I think it's just basically been cooling itself. It's basically mm. basing itself in its own tallow. And I think that's why it's taking longer than what we expected on it. And the, the entire outside is glistening and shiny and there's juice running all over it. So if we stop it, where's the button here? If we stop it, there was no, there was nothing dripping. Just wait a second and you'll see all, you see all this juice so running down. Run down. Now drip, drip, drip. And then pretty soon there's almost going to be a steady stream. And mind you, this is a Costco choice brisket, so it's not anything spectacular by it's, any means. It's one of the worst briskets that you can find everywhere, basically. I mean, it's nothing special at all, but just the amount of juiciness that yeah. I'm seeing completely shocked me. This is why you do sometimes weird things, like let's see what happens if, you know, because logically I should have been able to reason through this and oh yeah, it'll start basting. I never even thought of it. No. It wasn't until I opened the lid and took a look at it and saw how crazy juicy it is that uh, I, I really kind of put that together. Yeah. But we should take this thing off and rest it and then give it a taste test because looks matter, but not nearly as much as taste. So we'll get this thing off, we'll take it inside, we'll rest it, and uh, we'll see if this is something that's actually worth doing or if it was just a dumb experiment, but I'm willing to find out. It'll be interesting. I don't know what to expect, I really don't. If, if it ends up being amazing, like what are we gonna tell people? Go get a, a rotisserie that can rotate like a 12 pound brisket? Yeah, you know, so like I said, GMGs do it stock or I mean, just go all out and buy the $12,000 uh, <laughs> Twin Eagle. Let's pull it off and see what we got. All right, we'll take it inside. Okay, we pulled this thing off. We let it rest for a couple of hours, which is not ideal, but we need to go home tonight, so. It's good enough for us tonight. So we're gonna pull the skewer out of the center of it. We had it wrapped in foil because we let it go unwrapped the entire time. And then we're gonna slice it and taste it. There we go. Ooh. It's tender, that's for sure. Let's see, see if there's a little gaping hole through it. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> and we got a little hole here too. That's funny from the time. Yeah. Oh man, that looks pretty, pretty money though. That looks pretty freaking good, man. Yeah. Got a little bit of crispiness there. Yeah. Dude, 
look at that. smells like my comp food. It's like very phosphate-ish. Yeah, it smells like competition barbecue. Yeah, I, and that's what's... But, but look at this end cut. This should be dry. I mean... What we're getting. This should be a relatively dry cut. Okay, we sliced up this brisket. We have several slices of the lean. We have the end cuts. We have some burn ends. And then we have a couple slices of fatty. I have to confess, when we started off this video, I did not expect it at all to turn out like this. I thought, oh, well, this will be fun to do. It's going to be kind of quirky and stupid. But, you know, uh, it'll be maybe interesting, the results. But now I'm actually really, really impressed. Like, the fat render on the fatty side is like if you did a foil boat brisket on an offset. Um, it looks really, really good. And these choice briskets from Costco are not impressive. And then I'm getting this weird smell that I can't describe. It smells like almost like top ramen, like a little MSG-ish. Like my, my comp food with a lot of phosphates have the same smell, but it's weird because like as much as I've used this rub, yeah. I've never gotten this smell off of a brisket. So I don't know if it's just, I, I can't explain it. It's it's different. I mean, it's not off-putting by any means, but it's, it's no. just... I, a different smell I wasn't expecting, so. Yeah, so Erica, who's standing behind the camera right now, described the smell like when Harry Sue came and showed me how to do competition brisket, and we used beef broth and stuff like that, and so I, maybe it's something similar to that. Maybe it's got like a roasty yeah, something going I, on. I mean, other than it somehow maybe concentrating that, you know, with that tallow basically going around and around, that is just... I, I don't know, it's it's interesting. Initial observations, we have a nice dark color. There's some parts of the fat that really didn't get super dark. And then some parts of uh, the meat side actually got a little bit dried out. Nothing severe, but it definitely did happen. I think that's a result of us pushing it at the end, going to 300. Yeah. It's like, we're getting this thing finished. We're gonna do this video, we're gonna go home. But really, we probably would have been better off leaving it at 250 or 275. Yeah. I don't think we would have had that, and I think we might have had an even better product, which is shocking to me. So yeah. what are your thoughts on how it turned out without tasting it yet? I mean, I wasn't expecting it to look this good. Back in my days of competition, every once in a while you get stuck that the only brisket you could get was like choice, and you just have to inject the living heck out of it with phosphates. <laughs> so that moisture that we're getting off of this, the evenness of it, I, mm -hmm. I was... Kind of concerned about it cooking evenly, and I wasn't expecting this good of a bark. I mean, it was yeah. like halfway through, we're looking at this thing going, man, this thing is starting to look killer. I used to <laughs> always joke about plate ribs being like brisket on a stick. I'm huh? stoked that we actually like got brisket. <laughs> we, we, we did brisket <laughs> we on We got stick. brisket on an actual stick. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I couldn't believe the moisture. When it was in there turning, you'd see like the fat bubbling and stuff on the outside. I'm like, oh, this looks really good. It's been teasing us yeah. all day long, so. All right, what should we start? With. You know what? Let's go. Let's go with the like our our most critical. Let's start with a um, a lean piece here. Okay. Off the point. It's got pretty good texture. Yeah, I mean, texture is great. Even even with a hole in the middle, <laughs> <laughs> it's got this. There's still the perfect resistance to it. Not <laughs> surprisingly good, man. I yeah. I mean, and it's a pellet grill brisket, so yeah. it's you know. Flavor's not too bad on it, you know, not like heavy smoke by any mm -hmm. means, but the the texture and even through this lean part, mm -hmm. the fat yeah. blends very well. I'm probably one of the best choice briskets I've had. Yeah, I am absolutely shocked. <laughs> like I'm, I'm flabbergasted by this. But it makes sense watching this thing just, you know, rotate it in its own tallow. This is always the fat cap up versus fat cap down. Like does both. <laughs> Right, yeah, all of it. <laughs> fat cap sideways. Um, you know, does does a fat cap actually render out through a piece of meat? Hmm. You know, I mean, because that's always the argument versus top right. versus down, right? So here we are rotating this thing, and we're visibly watching it just marinate all the way around, which might be it covering the outside versus yeah. actually permeating through it. Might be I a think whole that's what's thing. going on. I do taste that roast, but there's also a really good trail of that fat, the sweetness mm -hmm. of the fat yeah. that I'm still getting with it. Yeah. Now, I mean, I'm getting that fat cap off that bite, but like if I take a bite here, there's still trails with it. Like it, it mm -hmm. is no doubt 
in the bark of that. Yeah, it's all the way around. Yeah. Like the, the entire outside was covered in that rendered fat. Right. So I would expect that bite I just took where there's no fat cap left on right. it to not have as much as what I'm getting out of it. And that's yeah, the fatty sweetness. Yeah, and yeah. that's what's kind of wild about it. So. <sighs> wow. <laughs> all right. Dang. Um, I got to reorient my bearings after that. I, I legitimately thought this was going to be terrible, and then we could just say, oh, this is so stupid, don't ever do this. Oh, I thought we had everything going against us. We had yeah. a tiny brisket. Yep. All right. On a pellet grill. Previously frozen choice brisket. Uh, yeah. So, I, I mean, that, boy, that little last bit I'm getting hanging right now. I yeah. love that part. It's pretty dang good. <sighs> so surprising. All right, your turn. I'll let you choose which slice of point you want to try. Lady behind the camera demands some. Dude, look at how juicy this is. Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> look at, yeah, this is unbelievable, man. <laughs> I just. I, I, I want to go after it with a, like a legit, like a creek stoner. You know, yeah, like, what if we did it with prime? Yeah, a Creekstone Prime, like something that we expect to be good instead yeah, of. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't it be something if somehow that turned out to be bad, but just the cheap stuff is good? <laughs> I mean, the juiciness in this, all the fat on top has been rendered down on, yeah. on this chunk right here, but the juiciness on this is unbelievable. <laughs> this is stupid. I, I'm not. Ex <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't wrap my head around this. This is seriously. Oh, so good. Next, let's cook a brisket <laughs> on a rock. I don't know. This makes no sense. <laughs> that crunch to that bark right now is. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, it gives you crunchy bark. I don't think it would be anywhere near this. No. I was like, this is a dumb thing we're going to do because it's fun. <laughs> this is so stupid. That was crazy. It is crazy. Is the point that on a choice not normally that juicy? No. Especially, remember I just did a video about how crappy the uh, yeah, choice know. Costco briskets are. So I did a brisket rather than wrapping it. I did it in confit. Yeah. Right? And then I compared it to one that was just wrapped normally. The yeah. one that was wrapped normally, garbage. The one confit, super juicy. But. This you, has more flavor. This, yeah, this like, does and, have more And you flavor. have to, like with choice, you got to like foil wrap choice or do whatever to get it to at least do something that's tolerable, right? Yeah, you gotta you gotta work really hard. I mean <laughs> I'd say Creekstone choice is the exception. Yeah. You know, but it's the exception because the rule for everything else is you gotta work really hard to make that choice good. I can't believe that. I can't I'm 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 seriously tripping on the flavor of the, the bark like the, the crunch of the bark and the flavor that pulls through on it is and we only let this thing rest like not really long enough. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. What if we had done a proper rest on this? Thing? I know. And I was like, okay, yeah, we're gonna get something. It'll, it'll be edible. We'll start with that, right? Yeah. I mean, the bark started to excite me a little bit, but <laughs> I can't. Was not expecting. Not this. at all. All right, all right and try the burn end. Let's go for it. Crunch, juice, salt, smoke. I don't know. Everything I thought I knew. Um. <laughs> Everything I thought I knew was a lot. <laughs> That's remarkable, man. Yeah, that piece is killer up there. Oh, the very end? Dude, try it. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey. Right? Like, it's just the right amount of crunch in the bark. Yeah. I was expecting the end cut. It's like, yeah, it's, it's a foregone conclusion. Yeah, like it's going to be dry, whatever. We didn't wrap it. This is just a stupid choice brisket. <laughs> this is so dumb. <laughs> For the viewers out there, today's been a day where like everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And somehow this went oh so right, even though this is the one thing. It's like, it doesn't matter if it's good yeah. or bad, we'll just tell the truth. It, here's the end piece that's literally like dried out because it was on the spit. Yep. And it's still like... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Dude. I can't get over this, man. I'm like wondering, have I been trying too hard? Well, you, got, you got to try that with sure. a little bit of like the conduction from the rod. <laughs> You'd expect it to be just... <laughs> the outside's a little crunchy, but it's delicious. <laughs> this is so stupid. I don't even... <laughs> How do we interpret this, man? It's like one of the best barks I've ever had. Yeah. What in the world, man? I'm reminded of an experiment done by Ernest Rutherford where he was setting up something that he, uh, we're going to do this experiment. We already know what's going to happen. And then something shocking happened and he discovered the nucleus. Yeah. 
right? And so I'm like, dude, we just discovered the equivalent of barbecue's nucleus. Final thoughts. Shocked, flabbergasted, astounded, dumbfounded. I don't know. I, I can't put two and two together. <laughs> the complexity of flavor that you get on the outside. Yeah. It, I mean, it's retained moisture kind of like confit, and it's made new flavors kind of like frying it. Yeah. You know? Um, and, and, like, and now I, I get the, the ramen thing you're talking about. Like yeah. the smell, I'm like, oh, you know what? It does remind me of that ramen umami type of thing. I want to try this with something really good now. I, I do too. Like... Well, yeah, th this little piece that's got the little kind of char on it from the rock. Yep. Like, I think this is honestly my favorite part of it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> and it's, it's the freaking tip of uh, the flat. That part should be inedible right now. I know. Now. Guys, um, <laughs> we're shocked. We obviously don't know exactly how to describe what we're eating. Really, really good. My wife behind the camera, also shocked. I came in ready to just, sh well, figuratively shred this thing. Um, yeah. And say, oh, this is so stupid. Don't ever try it. Some things are fun to try, but they don't make good food. I've done plenty of those things in the past, and I was ready. Okay, here we'll we'll show a fail, and might be interesting just to see. It was totally the opposite. And 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 I'm kind of curious too, like if we would revert it all the way back to salt and pepper, because I mean this rub is basically salt and pepper, but yeah. there's something else going on here, and I can't figure out if. It, but I've used this rub. Yeah. And so again, like I guess we got to strip this thing down even more. <laughs> What's going on? Here? Go salt only. <laughs> yeah, like this is. You. I I'm, I'm baffled. Like I was not expecting anything near near this result at all. And you know, it, it does kind of remind me of picanha. Yeah. Like if you do it like a, on a rotisserie or something, some of that flavor. But you don't render picanha to this level. You no, know. Yeah, definitely you don't. But you also don't cook it for you know ten and a half hours. No. I don't know that I could say I've learned something. I'm just way more confused now. That bark is so good. Yeah. Erica, what do you think about it? I can't believe how juicy that point is. <laughs> I, I cooked a Costco choice brisket just before we left, right? N nowhere in, even in the same universe yeah. as yeah. how good this is. Yeah. Yeah, I got stuck with Costco choices at the last event I did. And... No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely going to try this again to see if this is legit or some random fluke or just like the planets aligned and somehow this ended up awesome. But I want to thank Eric for letting us use his $11,000 grill, his rotisserie setup and um, hanging out with us today and and cooking with us. If you guys want to check out his website, it's thebarbecuehq.com or you can follow him on Instagram at thebarbecuehq. If you enjoyed the video, you can hit the like button down below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you found this video helpful or informative or just fun. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'll see you guys next time and I will be thinking about how I can recreate this. I don't know. Checking this at all? No! no not me anywhere either. near this good. Yeah, I, like, yeah, I was legitimately just, this is going to suck, but... It'll be fine, and then we can have fun talking about how much it sucks. Oh, look at that huge hole in the middle of the brisket. It's so stupid. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I, so I just, I, I can't formulate a conclusion on it because yeah. I'm just like trying to. It's like nothing adds up. I can't up. stop eating it. Yeah, nothing adds up here, man. Let me eat this end cut. That should be inedible. Quite edible. Emma, do you want steak? Do you want to try brisket? Right, you want to try some brisket? Are you just as confused as us? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like it? Uh -huh. Apparently so. <laughs> Which is better, this or your In N Out burger? <laughs> <laughs> that a girl. Boom! <laughs>